Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show how to configure the DHCP service in relation to the UDA server. First from within the UDA itself and then from server 2003 from Microsoft. First, I want to take a step back and explain where in the grand scheme of things the UDA server fits. So as we can see, I am now looking at the getting started page of the UDA server I have set up in the previous video. If I just go back you can see this is the main page and I'm inside the getting started page. In here you can see a diagram that illustrates the PXC environment where the UDA fits. On the left you can see a PC. That is our host system for the UDA. It could be any OS that is able to run at least the VMware player. That is Windows XP, Vista, Linux and so on. But I personally recommend using at least the VMware server, if not the VM VMware uh, workstation, which is the best. On the right side of the screen, you can see the PXC client, or the computer that is an empty shell we are going to fill using the UDA server. In the middle, we can see the inner workings of the UDA server. Know that they are all contained within the VMware environment, thus making them easily migratable. Now I'm going back to the to the main page and there I'm going to go into the web interface. Again the, the default password is admin and admin but I have a different password for mine. And now that I'm in I'm going over to the services tab and here I'm going into DHCP as you can see my DHCP is not running because I have actually configured the 2003 DHCP server already. Now I want to give a short explanation as to what exactly DHCP is. DHCP, the, the letters are an acronym for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol and this server gives us the ability to assign workstations or devices on the network uh, IP addresses automatically instead of uh, assigning it uh, manually. Now once we are in here, we need to check this uh, start DHCP on boot so that if your uh, server reboots or shuts down for some reason, the next time that it will come up, it will uh, activate the DHCP server. And in, in the text uh, portion of this configuration, you need to, to set up the IP address for the server itself and uh, the range for the client. Now I've changed my home network so that it now uh, has the IP ad address range of 192.168.2 and uh, I'm going to change the, the configuration accordingly here in the, in the UDA so the next server is actually the, the UDA server or the DHCP server itself so I'm giving it this option and this part here is, uh, is saying if the client is a PXC client as you can see in this uh, option then give it uh, an answer of this file name which is the Linux kernel that gives us the menu and and tell him that the file is located on this server so moving on this is uh, actually configuration for a normal DHCP without relation to any PXC options this is this is how you would uh, set up uh, a DHCP server on Linux so you need to give it what is the, the subnet range, as I said I've changed my home network to, to have this subnet and uh, give it the, the router's name, now in my case I'm giving it the UDA as address but, but uh, that, that is because in my particular situation it was the router now this is supposed to be an actual router if you have a, a gateway in your network this is the, the, the option that will tell the, the client where is the router in case it needs it and more options is uh, domain name servers actually by the way this is option 3 in uh, in DHCP uh, terms if you, when we look at it from the Microsoft's uh, perspective it would be easier to, to know that but this is option 3 and this is option 6 so you give it the the name servers IP address even though this option is, is as I said it's an option it's optional it is recommended to to put it in here just just in case and now note that in this case I do assume that I have another DHCP server on my network and I've configured it to not uh, not g give out the, the IP addresses from 230 to till 235 
but it is not recommended because there, there might arise a case that uh, that UDA is actually giving out uh, all its IP addresses and there's nothing left for the for the PXE clients. This is why I suggest and uh, recommend actually if you have another DHCP server like uh, Windows 2003 or another uh, solution in your network, use its DHCP server to, to hand out the boot options. It is always recommended to you to have only one DHCP server on your network. And that's it after you've uh, changed all the, the, the settings. Again, this is, this is uh, in general, this is what is the, the, the DHCP server's address. Uh, this option gives it uh, the the file name, and this option says from where to take the uh, take the file name. What is the the TFTP server uh, address? This is uh, what is uh, the subnet from which I'm uh, I'm going to distribute the addresses from. Uh, optional routers, as you can see, it's an optional optional d domain name server, and the range of addresses, which is actually the pool of addresses. That uh, that we have to assign IP addresses for uh, for any actually any DHCP uh, client and apply and uh, as you can see it, it just did it and that's it. Now I'm going into my virtual machine environment and I'm going to boot one of my machines up and what you can see I've told it to network boot using F12 and. Now you can see that it got the DHCP answer and uh, it booted correctly. Alright, as you can see here, I've set up a 2003 uh, server and I've uh, set up a DHCP service on it. And if I expand here my, um, my network, you can see that I've defined one scope. And within the, this scope, to make it uh, to make it uh, a PXE environment uh, compatible compatible scope, we need to add the, the options within the scope options. By the way, you can do it within server options. But if you do it within server options, the options will uh, apply to every scope you have in your DHCP server. And that sometimes sometimes it's it's not necessary or, or it's not desired. If we look at the the, the DHCP options. You can see that number three is the router. You can set up here what is the what is the router. You can set up the DNS names, the DNS, the domain name, servers names. All of these options can be set. They are all optional, but usually what you see in in every environment that, that uh, three, which is router, six, which is D DNS, and uh, 44, I think, which is Wins, are are set up here. You can see that 44 is Wins. And what we're looking for is actually option 66 and 67. As within UDA, the boot server host name is actually it is the IP address of the of the server that holds the TFTP server. In our case, it's uh, it's the UDA server 192.168.2.240. Option 67 is actually the file name that we're looking for inside that the IP address that we've just been given. And we already know from configuring the UDA uh, DHCP server that it is PXE Linux dot zero, and we press OK, and now the the boot environment is is set up. And I'd like to thank you for viewing, and uh, please sign in again for the next video.